I wanted to start with some of the scriptures that you have. You know, Jesus uh, talked as much about love as he talked about forgiveness. And if you really go through scripture, those are, those are his two topics. If you had to say, what did Jesus talk about the most? It's love and forgiveness. And it's interesting because it's those two wonderful gifts from God that enables us to receive healing. Uh, the forgiveness opens the door and the love brings the healing. And we have found uh, throughout our ministry here at CHM that the major block uh, to healing in all areas, physical healing, inner healing, deliverance, generational, is unforgiveness. It's the major block. I've seen people right at the point of healing and they will refuse to forgive themselves or someone else. And so for, just remember, forgiveness is the door. Okay, it takes us into the healing presence of the Lord where we can receive his love and his mercy and his kindness and all those wonderful things that we receive when we go into his presence. Now, Jesus really equated uh, judging and forgiveness and loving. He put all of those kind of on the same level, didn't he? And we know the highest gift is love, but forgiveness takes us there, mercy takes us there, grace takes us there. So all of these scriptures that you have in your manual have to do with overcoming our human nature, which seeks revenge, which seeks judgment. Uh, well, all of us fall into that, don't we? Now, you may hurt me, but don't hurt anyone I love. You know, and we see this, don't we, on the personal level and on the societal level. You know, you, you bomb one town here, I'm going to come and bomb five in your country. You know, it's just, it, and we know that hate begets hate. And mercy always produces mercy. You know, so these scriptures, we have Jesus really admonishing us not to judge, not to seek revenge, and to forgive, to show mercy. So uh, I love the one, Matthew 5, I won't read all of it, but it says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn your other cheek as well. If someone wants to sue you, America needs this line right now. <laughs> yes, someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. You know, Jesus is creating freedom, isn't he? He's creating freedom. Don't let anything bind you. Uh, give it away. Throw it away. You know, let them have it. Give to the one who asks you. Do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. That's another one we could spend a day on. <laughs> you have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is where Jesus raises the bar now. He raises the bar in this next sentence. But I tell you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons and daughters of your Father in heaven. He says, in other words, you are my child, you are my son, you are my daughter, if you can do this. It's not just going to the cross and repenting. There's all kinds of, of conditions. If you obey me, I will do this. That's throughout the New Testament. Jesus put that on almost every single thing he's taught. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. It's just so beautiful. If, those, if you just love those who love you, what reward will you get? You know something, as Francis and I used to travel around in the early part of our ministry, we used to speak a lot in churches. We don't do that so much anymore. And it never failed. I don't think it failed in five or six years, whatever we were doing, mainly churches. One or two people in the church would always make their way to us. And they would say, while you're here, would you pray for so-and-so? Sometimes it'd be 10 or 15 people. Because every church has someone that is unlovable, don't they? They do. Every, if I ask you to just close your eyes, you're already thinking of the person. I don't even have to ask you. <laughs> Isn't it true? We all know that person or persons. 
in, in high school, in middle school, we have our cliques, you know? That's where so much of, many of us need healing. You know, but that he's saying, love those that are unlovable. Love your enemies, even. And uh, anyway, going back to the church, they would say, if you can't heal them, will you take them with you? <laughs> I'd say, no, that's not our ministry. <laughs> that's not our ministry. You know, and uh, gosh, what's his name? Uh, Jean Vanier, who started the L'Arche Communities. Uh, just a great saint, great saint. We've worked with him. We love him. Uh, I actually visited his original community in France and studied kind of what they were doing with community before I married my husband. But anyway, what, in one of his books on community... I'll challenge all of you with this. He says to pray that one unlovable person will come into your community. And he said that person will teach you to love as Jesus has called us to love. And instead, you know, we tend to run away from that person. We see them coming, they call us on the phone, call her ID, oh my God, I can't believe it's her. You know, what does she want now? You know, it's just we have all of this. And we don't reach out to those that are unlovable. And, you know, people that are really wounded, extremely wounded, become unacceptable. And then they get more and more rejected, you know, because they're so needy that people don't want to be around them. You know, so a lot of those people come here. And it's so beautiful to see how God transforms them and draws that true self out. You know, so Jesus is raising the bar He's really challenging us. Don't just love those that love you. As I said, most of us seek revenge. Most of the people you'll pray with will find it very difficult to forgive someone because they want that person to suffer, you know, like they have suffered. Then Matthew 6, he goes on to say, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you. That's pretty strong, isn't it? That's pretty strong. So if we don't show mercy and we don't uh, become people that are, really live in that grace, it's a grace that you have to live in, uh, where you won't take offense all the time, then how, how do we stay close to the Father? How do we say we're in the kingdom? if we're not living as kingdom children. That's what Jesus is saying. One of the examples you have here is Archbishop, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the reconciliation process he had going on in South Africa that is still going on. You know, and there was people there. My son and I were talking about this this morning. I saw uh, Archbishop came here and spoke at our university. They had film clips of some of the people that had had these reconciliation meetings. And some of them were mothers whose sons had been macheted to death in front of them. And they were actually able, with their faith, to forgive. You know, it, it's truly remarkable when you look at the history of South Africa, what's happened there. So that's kind of on the larger scale. We look at the Middle East. We obviously need a lot of forgiveness there, don't we? And that's ancient, and it's still being carried out today. We see how it goes generation to generation to generation. But anyway, Jesus says, and then in Luke 6, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Be merciful, as your Father is merciful. It's extraordinary when we see one extend mercy. It, we all marvel at that, don't we? when they extend mercy. It's because they are so rooted and grounded in God and that the grace is there. Do not take revenge, Romans 12, because God's, God is the one who takes revenge. I've learned to get out of his way and say, Lord, I pray for mercy for that person. I pray, pray to bless them, but they're in your hands. You know, whatever you want to do. Isaiah 53, one of the great promises, uh, messianic prom promises from Isaiah, and it's talking about Jesus. 
He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. You just can't get any better than that. That's what the cross is. That's what the cross is. And then in 1 John 1, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Okay? He is the faithful one. He is the faithful one. When we come to him and confess, that's what we have. So we have to understand that forgiveness is central to the gospel message. It's central to healing and to being transformers. You, you will be transformed when you forgive and when you walk in forgiveness. 